We don't just cover the classics here. A good song is a good song regardless of the time it came out in. And coming up, we have an exclusive interview with the frontman of a modern rock band on one of the biggest songs of the last 10 years. It's a rock song that exploded onto the scene and at the time it broke chart records next on Professor of Rock. Hey music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you uh, remember the nice price sticker that they had on cassettes and records, you know, back in the 80s, back in the day, you're gonna love this channel. Subscribe to our videos right now to get to know the real stories behind your favorite songs. Uh, click the bell so you never miss out on our daily content from the artists, from the legends. And take a look at our Patreon link for another catalog of content, exclusive content below, and that supports our mission of keeping the music alive. AWOL Nation, fronted by Aaron Bruno, burst onto the scene with their platinum album, Megalithic Symphony, in 2011, uh, with the chart-busting rock hit, Sail. Uh, it was a crossover hit on the rock and alternative charts, on the pop charts as well. The song spent 79 weeks on the Hot 100. It's the second longest in history to date. Aaron tells us a very interesting story of creating a song that just keeps going. As we go into this interview, I want to thank our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear. It's the, the frames that I, I sport on the regular. When you go to zenny.com, you can choose from a plethora of styles and colors and looks, and you can add amazing features like blue blocks to protect your eyes from digital blue light. And you can also try them on with their virtual try-on software to see what you look like. Once you order a pair of Zennies, you're never going to want for another brand. I can promise you that. They're really great. Check it out today. Here's Aaron with the story of Cell. I want to go into your first studio album, mm. which was released in 2011, mm. Megalithic Symphony. Brilliant collection of songs, and it really provided an insight to what was to come, especially with Cell. Mm -hmm. I mean, that influenced a lot of bands and, and movements that we're still hearing right now. Yeah. Kind of industrial, tinge, electro pop, that uh, you contemplated that, I read. You thought about maybe a little darker song, and you were writing for some people at the time. Mm -hmm. you, were, you were broke, as I understand. Yeah, just trying to figure out how to stay in music, you know. Yeah, so tell me like, about that. I was just, uh, parents with money would pay, um, usually a, a friend, some money to produce a song and come up with some sort of uh, pop song. My last band, Under the Influence of Giants, we'd all gone our separate ways, and I was just trying to navigate through how to make a living in music and not throw in the towel. So I spent a lot of time writing hooks. Uh, that's never been the issue for me, um, writing catchy material. Not that it's always good, yeah. but you know, it's, it's easy to come up with a bit of a nursery rhyme for me, you know? And um, so that's what I was doing with these projects. And it was a great experience. I'm grateful that he gave me this opportunity. And you know, it, it wasn't much money. It was enough to, to it was enough to feel sort of like a professional and tell my parents, <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm, I got this one gig, kind of, you know, but working on it was completely uh, unfulfilling artistically, of course. I look back to that time, very grateful that um, I, I was pinned against the wall to do that because then when I had freedom to make my own music, it's what ended up being the first album, Megalithic Symphony. And, um, you know, and a lot of that is the result of being in other bands and you know, when you're in a band and it's, it's, there's a camaraderie and it's, it's, it's an agreement that you all have an equal vote, how most bands are usually. And, um, you know, so I was always told there, there was some sort of uh, walls, you know, around certain things I wanted to do vocally or, um, you know, production wise. No one wanted to give me the, the full keys to the car to lead the way, you know, and, and maybe rightfully so. But uh, once I was left alone, I was just so excited because the sky was the limit. If I wanted to have a hip hop sounding drum loop, I could do that. If I wanted to scream on a part, I could do that. If I wanted to sing in a falsetto and be just a straight up like Prince ripoff attempt, yeah. I, I could do that, you know, and, um, and everything in between. And at the time there wasn't a, a ton of um, genre mashing up like there is now um, at alternative radio at least, or, or the alternative landscape was 
The 2000s were a weird time for music, let's yeah. just say, you know. No, so, absolutely. So I, I saw an opportunity there. I'm like, okay, well, rock and roll is definitely boring to me at the time, which is funny going full circle. Eight years later, I lo- <laughs> I'm, I'm just head over heels back in love with it again, you know. But, I, you know, I, there was a couple records that came out. One, Justice, Genesis record came out, right? I remember thinking, wow, this, this is an electronic band. They use some, some organic instrumentation, but the power of that opening track was just really moved me, the power yeah. of it. And, and the low end they were able to get uh, with bass synth and um, you know their drum sounds. So I'm thinking, okay, well, I wanna get that kind of power, but you know, I wanna sing in a raw way, the way I only know how to, and surround some, some guitars here and there, but without it being like too rock and roll. Because yeah. at the time, the music needed a departure from that for sure. Too many bands had just done power chords and like new metal was, was, was a sad thing. And the beautiful darkness to that song too, Shell. Yeah, a- well, yeah, and then, you know, I mean, I'd always been a fan of Nine Inch Nails and early on I got, I got pigeonholed as like a, uh, you know, a Nine Inch Nails kind of thing, but you know, it's far from it. I just, you know, he, he Trent Reznor's genius, uh, brilliant guy. And, and when he came out, and I'm never trying to compare myself. I'm just saying, you know, a lot yeah. of people said that because, you know, oftentimes uh, folks are trying to put a label. Yeah, on. put some sort of label. So, um, you know, he, he got away with doing just that, combining all different sorts of genres and Definitely a little more darker than anything I'd done and more industrial. Even with Sale, there, there's real drums on there, real guitar, um, and um, a vocal that I just did. I just did a double, both in one take, thinking that um, it was just a demo and, and maybe I'd redo it later, but it felt pretty good. So I, I'm never one to want to redo something if it's already, if it ain't broke, why fix it? You know? Yeah. So uh, I got really lucky with that song and um well it comes out and it number 17 on the billboard charts number four on the rock charts mm-hmm. and, and top five in the alt charts 10 times platinum worldwide that blows the mind to yeah. think about but it was such a huge hit across a lot of different charts yeah what was cool though is it spent 20 weeks on the chart fell off came back mm-hmm. a year later reached its new peak and then the first time that's ever been done in history where fell off the charts and then came back and actually had a higher chart. I, I don't peak. totally understand those those numbers. Um, you know, I'm kind of a chart geek, so I love that. Sure, but yeah. My manager would always weeks. tell me about that stuff and, and say, hey, man, this is all happening. But it just seemed so, so like such an out-of-body experience, that, and it still does today. To know that 10 million people bought it mm-hmm. and then And who 70, knows how many people have actually listened to it. Or, and then um, 79 weeks on the charts, which was a record. That actually no song had ever done that in the history of pop music. Ironically enough, it was broken by a band that was definitely inspired by you about a year or two later. And I think Journey was in there too. There, there was some sort of list yeah. that we were in that-, that yeah, Don't Stop Believing," Jason Mraz, I'm Yours. And right. there, there are four or five songs that have spent over 75 weeks mm-hmm. on the charts. But uh, Imagine Dragons later broke that book. I guess but, our song was just like, you know, kind of kind of snuck into that room that house, let's say, and f- found a room no one was looking in to kick us out, you know. It had such a massive effect in, in pop culture. I mean, mm-hmm. being used in the BMW commercial that mm-hmm. was on the Super Bowl and then on the Vikings trailer for the, the show. That was a big one. The Vikings one really moved the meter. This is not the end. It's just a beginning. And, you know, it's still getting picked up for different stuff. And what, what's so special about that song being, obviously I'm most known for that song, you know, and that'll never change. But um, e- even if I had you know, more number one songs because there's been some since then. It'll always be that song, obviously, yeah. you know. And, it opened uh, up the whole the whole world for you. Yeah. And it's, uh, uh, it's a really honest song. Um, That's it what it came say. out of nowhere, you know, and I'm really proud of the lyrics and the production. And, you know, I wrote all of it myself. And so to be known for, for that kind of song is pretty cool instead of maybe... There's other songs I love from that record, um, but... If I were to pick one to be known for, it would just certainly be that one. Well, like you said, it comes from such an honest place, very relatable. And I want to ask you about one of the key lyrics in it. Maybe I should cry for help. Maybe I should kill myself. Thing about that, and I know you don't condone suicide, but everybody's been there. Everybody has felt 
mm -hmm. that way, especially in the world that we live in. It just really opened it up. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, you know, uh, that was just a journal entry at the time and it just came out of me. I mean, I, I had the groove first, the haunting string line. And then when the beat came together, I was just like, okay, you know, and the, the melody came out of thin air. And then it poured out of my fingers on a, I wish I still had the, the piece of paper I wrote the lyrics on. Oh, I probably man. just threw it away, or, you know, but um, yeah, it just came out, you know, and this is how I show my love. Obviously, music is the best way I can show that and it's what I care about most, you know, besides my loved ones. And the, the maybe I should blank yeah. line. Uh, when I wrote that down, I thought this is too heavy, but no one's gonna hear it anyway, so who cares? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, the, I, I never sing that line because I don't want it ever to be misconstrued. And and I was just talking to another uh, um, very successful singer about this very subject. And um, yeah, we've all felt that way. Everybody says that. I mean, it's used so so lightly, and people say like, "Oh man, I'm so hungry. I want to." blank you know and or or man i had the worst day ever you know uh, but when it gets actually heavy um i think everybody's fantasized about that uh but you know we've all felt that way in sort of a, like i said in in a make-believe sort of way yeah you know? well sell with me into the dark and that's again relatable resonates with people because of uh, their experience in, in, in life and, and being able to express that in some way by listening to the music. And I'm just saying, hey, look, you're not alone. Let's celebrate this thing together. And again, it's important for people to realize that I was only talking to five people that were around me at the time. You know, I <laughs> yeah. had no audience. So I was just, I was such a student of hip hop music in the 80s and, and 90s, right? So um, that was my take on that that part or or color of of my um influences you know with that beat and um it's it, it's really it's really trippy if i turn on pop radio today there'll be like anywhere from two to several songs i'll hear that have that same kind of groove not that i'm saying I'm, i invented that beat no there's been many beats like that but um but certainly it influenced uh, a lot of songs that have come out since then. Yeah. And the music video too, so iconic. Did you help with the treatment or come up with that? Well, my buddy Cameron Duddy, uh, he and I were living together, partying a lot, uh, both you know, broke, trying to figure out. He was an aspiring um, director and, and filmmaker in I being you know, an aspiring songwriter at the time. So we were just kind of uh, partners on a lot of stuff. And so the funny story about that is that I, I begged the president of our label to allow me to use Cameron yeah. for our first single, which was Burn It Down. Um, a lot of people don't realize our first single was Burn It Down. Burn it down. So burn it down. And, uh, and he said, no, we want to use someone with more experience, but you could use him for sale. I'll let you make a video for sale. And I shook his hand. And so, sale, so, <laughs> so Burn It Down ends up not even being a single. Sale starts to take off. Uh, the writing's on the wall that that's our strongest look <laughs> yeah. moving forward. And so Cam, by a handshake, got to make the video for sale. <laughs> and we didn't know what we were gonna do. And he's like, I got it. And he called me and he said that, uh, you know, you're abducted, yeah. basically, you know, and, and it should look and feel like E.T. <laughs> that was yeah. all we had. And I don't even know if we accomplished that, but that's what we were going for. And, um, and now Cameron went on to do videos for uh, Bruno Mars. He yeah. won a few VMAs. Um, and now he's in a successful country band called Midland and they're blowing up. They call it a problem, I call it a solution. So uh, full circle. I guess the, the moral of the story is if, if you do something with AWOL Nation, you may be very successful. <laughs> so I encourage everyone no, to join great, the family. that's great, man. I'm you know? glad I'm sitting here with you. That's, yeah. That's, that should rub off You're going to win some sort of award and uh, <laughs> oh, on the great heights and forget about me. Well, levitating, no, never. But yeah. the, the levitating part, that's even inspired 
imagery from bands and things like that. When you're levitating up in the sky and then you, you drop the tape recorder. Mm -hmm. It's such an iconic video. And that that's Thank kind you. of a, we grew up with that in the 80s and 90s. Mm -hmm. The music video was such a huge thing, a world premiere video yeah. on MTV. And, and that lives up to those expectations of what those music videos used to be. That was hard for artists back in the day because they don't want people thinking of the song based on the video yeah. and so forth. But it's also been in movies when the game stands tall, playback. Season three of The Good Wife. I liked it, how they used it on that. Did you ever see that? I didn't see it. That's my feeling is like, it, you know, if I accidentally see it, it'll be really special. But I yeah. want to go out of my way to seek it out because it'll maybe ruin the magic of it, you know? Then that DJ first in Austin, uh, Toby Ryan, Toby Ryan played yeah. it. And then it just became, it seemed like just in a few weeks, it was uh, the it, most You know what, song. it was weird. So many stations said, no, nah, we're not going to play this. This is not our thing, you know? And then you know, it became like the, you know, a starting point for what is the thing now. So, but it, it, even though it blew up on the phones by request in, in yeah. Austin, there was a domino effect on the rest of the country and the world, but it was like, you know, a couple different domino rows, really. It wasn't all I like know. just instant, you know, because, and we're not part of a major label. We're part of an indie label, even though it's Red Bull and they're a massive company. The record label itself is a very small label and doesn't have the uh, kind of connections a major label does and um, the kind of uh, fuel to pour on a fire, you know, yeah. which was in sales case, a small fire. And it became a much larger, like, forest fire. Also, because they're a smaller label, they don't have a formula, or they didn't at the time. Now they've changed it a little bit, but they didn't at the time have any sort of rules. So we were able to just keep trying and then even have it cross over to pop radio, which is another wild accident, you know, to hear my song, my voice, you know, played next to, uh, you know, Katy Perry or <laughs> whoever <laughs> yeah. else, you know, was, was yeah. out, of, out of control, you know. All these little pockets of things happening, Vikings, mm. and then the DJ playing it, and the BMW commercial, mm. just keep keep it in in people's minds, and even still today. But mm -hmm. Machine Gun Kelly sampled it as yeah, well. Yeah, you he probably did that. heard that. There was like a metal band called Devil Del Driver. Dr yeah, Devil Driver. They, they yeah. Did it. And, and, you know, the list goes on and on and on. Well, and I, I think the reason it's still listened to today and 20 years from now is, again, it just it speaks to the soul. I hope so. You know, the, the, the whole goal is to, to age well musically, yeah. you know. And going into this new record, I really wanted to uh, do something that, that felt timeless. Make sure to leave us a comment about this modern rock hit. What are your thoughts on AWOL Nation and Aaron's other songs? What are some of the best songs and artists of the last decade? Who else should we interview uh, from that period now? Let us know in the comments. Now, if you like this video, we would invite you to be a full-time part of our community by subscribing. Also, we invite you to check us out on Patreon. Give us a look there to help us keep the music alive. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends.